A few days before a crucial European Council devoted to the future European multi-annual budget 2014 to 2020, the President of the European Commission, José Manuel Barroso, continued political contact with several European leaders. Receiving on Monday the visit of the newly re-elected Romanian Prime Minister Victor Ponta, he welcomed the efforts of the Romanian government to reduce its deficit, expected to be below 3% of GDP in 2012. President Barroso also encouraged the country to make a real push on the reform process, stressing that further progress on the independence of the judiciary and the appointment to key posts will be crucial milestones. Answering a question on media freedom in Romania, President Barroso stressed in very strong terms that the freedom of the media is a sacrosanct principle and that the Commission will always defend free and pluralist media in Romania and elsewhere. He also expressed his concerns over the complaints addressed to the Commission on orchestrated campaigns in the media that might pose a serious threat to the ongoing reforms, namely the independence of the judiciary in Romania. On Tuesday, the President travelled to the European Parliament in Strasbourg to attend a parliamentary debate which touched on various issues, including the EU's multi-annual budget. Following a key speech by French President François Hollande, President Barroso urged EU leaders to agree on an EU budget for 2014 to 2020 that would have enough resources to deal with the known challenges, but also enough flexibility to cope with the unexpected. He recalled that the consolidation of public finances and reforms were essential for competitiveness, but insufficient for ensuring sustainable growth in Europe. The President also thanked France for its efforts towards ensuring the integrity and stability of the Economic and Monetary Union. He congratulated the country for its efforts at home regarding the consolidation of public finances, reforms for competitiveness and combating unemployment. In the European Parliament debate on the future budget 2014-2020 on Wednesday, President Barroso made an urgent appeal to reach agreement. Further delays would send out a very negative message at this time of fragile economic recovery, he said. The risk being that positions would only harden and would become even more difficult to overcome. He strongly emphasized the need to ensure the consent of the European Parliament and argued in favor of innovative and growth-related aspects of the future budget, as well as for a strong solidarity dimension. He called on the heads of state and government not to miss this opportunity to take additional measures in fighting youth unemployment. We have a chance to take the right decisions, to offer our young men and women the perspective of a life in dignity. I want us to build on other initiatives of the Commission to fight youth unemployment, for instance, the reorientation and the reprogramming of the structural funds in eight member states most affected by the youth unemployment, and also our proposal for a youth guarantee. We should use the MFF to support these and similar actions. Last month, I have mentioned this idea in the joint meeting with European Parliament and national parliaments. I express the hope that this week, member states in the European Council can support our ambition to find concrete measures which hit the ground rapidly and make a difference. A youth employment initiative would be a powerful signal of solidarity and value added at European level. It is critical and important that such an initiative enters into force as soon as possible. The President also stressed that he would fight hard at the end of the week to preserve the European dimension of the multi-annual budget. Initiatives like Horizon 2020 for research, the Connecting Europe facility for investments in transport, energy and digital networks, and Erasmus for all for exchanges and training of young people across Europe. He also recalled the vital contribution of trade to Europe's economic recovery. In 2012, external demand was the main source of growth for the European economy. Meeting in Brussels at the end of the week after 26 hours of intense negotiations, European leaders finally agreed a 960 billion euro budget for the next seven years. President Barroso stated that a fair assessment of the agreement between the heads of state or government should recognize that this deal is not perfect, but it offers a basis for negotiations with the European Parliament. I hope these negotiations will be successful, he said. While stressing that the levels agreed by the heads of state and government are below what the Commission considers desirable, he also said that the deal that's been agreed can still be an important catalyst for growth and jobs. The positive elements, among others, that I want to underline are the following. Firstly, 
The basic structure of the Commission proposal and some innovative instruments have been preserved, including the Connecting Europe facility, which provides for uh, investment in transport, energy, and digital agenda. This makes our budget a tool for competitiveness and growth, and this with a pan-European logic. Secondly, in some areas, we will be able to invest significantly more than in the past. This is true for research and innovation, the program called Horizon 2020. It's true for Erasmus for all. We will also have, and this for the first time, a dedicated program for SMEs, a program called COSME. It makes also our budget more modern. Thirdly, we have agreement on a new and very important youth employment initiative. This is a commitment to act at European Union level on today's main political and social challenge, which is getting our young people back in work. This rightly reinforces the social dimension of our union, and it builds on the action launched last year by the Commission with eight member states. It will also fund the youth guarantee and other measures at European and national level. I'm also very pleased that it was possible to preserve the program of aid for the most deprived people. Given the opposition in some quarters, we can consider this a very positive result. Also externally, we kept our commitments to development aid and humanitarian aid, focusing now our support to the poorest countries. President Barroso stressed that one essential condition for this agreement to work is a maximum possible flexibility that will allow adapting to changing developments, for example by moving spending from one year to another. The budget agreement by the heads of state or government must now be endorsed by the European Parliament, a requirement that's come into force since the Lisbon Treaty. Mm -hmm.